Hi, my loves. Rose here with the Cackling Moon. Let's have a soul-to-soul, heart-to-heart talk. So I don't know if you guys pay attention to my... Um, on my YouTube channel, I have playlists, okay? So I don't know if you guys are aware. <laughs> if you're not aware, then you're now going to be aware. Um, so on YouTube, you could create a playlist and then you can like categorize your videos to sit on certain, to be in certain playlists. So I have a client reading playlist. I have, um, you know, a playlist for deck, um, deck reveals. I have a playlist for haul videos, um, and tarot, like tarot related videos. I have a, a, a category for that. And I also have the new one that I created like a couple months ago. Hi, my Stella, my Luna. Um, sorry, the cats are they're like playing with each other, which is big because they were not, they didn't want to play before. Um, like, look at, like, seriously, Starla is, see, Luna will hiss at her, but she doesn't attack her. Starla is so brave, like, she doesn't, she's not afraid. But the fact that they are even close to each other like that is big for me because the first day Luna didn't, she did not hide, she was hiding, she did not come out. So this is, this is, this is good stuff. I would rather Luna not hiss at her, but this, it's only like the fifth day. So we just got to be patient. <laughs> anyway, sorry, cats. That, that's my life right there. Um, so... I have playlists. So anyways, a couple months ago, I created the playlist Soul to Soul. Soul to Soul. <laughs> Try saying that really fast. Um, and the Soul to Soul is basically kind of like my rambling videos, but it's me like literally doing like deep conversations. Okay. So like the videos where I'm probably crying my eyes out, they're all going to be in Soul to Soul. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I wanted to let you guys know that in case you were looking for videos that were more kind of deep and in depth and just, you know, more about like the raw parts of my spirituality and myself, <laughs> um, and as transparent as I choose to be, cause I do like to have a barrier with that. So anyways, check it out. This is going to be one of them that's going to go into the soul to soul playlist. But um, this video, I wanted to talk about my, I wanted to talk about my experience with double lives, but also the topic of double life. Okay. So double life. What is a double life? Um, from my perspective and my opinion, because that's, that's what this is, is my opinion. Um, a double life is when you are one way with one group of people and another way with another group of people, okay? And it just depends your preference, what, why, your reasons. <laughs> we all have different reasons why we live double lives. Sometimes it's for the sake of two different jobs and maybe you don't want one job to know about the other. Sometimes it's because of family reasons. Sometimes it's because of negative reasons like you're in an affair or you are <laughs> lying to a spouse about your secret life like just some sometimes double lives are negative and then other times they are positives but they are they are like a a double-edged sword in a way okay and that's how mine is so I am in a double life I have a double life and I have been living a double life I, I, and I actually had like a realization of this, that I have been in a double life pretty much my entire life, okay? And it's because of the way I was raised. I was, I was raised in a very strict upbringing, okay? And my family, my, my values, my parents, their values that they placed on us growing up um, were very strict. You know, I was always compared to other cousins based on the cousins being more educated than I was, you know, they went to college and this, all this. Um, and then like, you know, I had a period where I was rebelling. So my double life consisted of when I went away on the weekends to be with my ex-boyfriend, I was living a completely different lifestyle, you know, with him and doing things that my parents would not have 
ever approved of. And that was my way to rebel because I was so sheltered growing up, you know, um, and I was so like kept under the microscope and, um, and then I was also living a, a painting, a, a painting a picture of the being the perfect daughter to limit stress because, you know, there was also that side of dealing with like, you know, alcoholism in the family and not wanting to stress my mom out because she was already going through a lot. So there was that phase too. So there was multiple little like reasons why I was always living in secret. Um, and then I experimented when I was like in my late teens, going into my early 20s, um, before I met my husband. So I met my husband when I was 21. So I would say between the ages of like 17 and 19, I was a wild girl. I was a very wild girl. Um, heard going to parties, drinking a lot, you know, smoking weed, just doing all of that. Okay. I'm going to a lot of shows because my ex-boyfriend was in a band. So we would always like, and we, and, and the thing with that, with our parents was they trusted us. <laughs> they trusted us. So I was able to go away on the weekends and like stay at my ex-boyfriend's house and then he would be able to stay at, at our house. We were as strict as they were as, and they weren't as Christian back then. They allowed certain things like that, you know? So it's a weird, it's a weird mix. And I feel like my, I feel like my father was very, um, lenient on things that most fathers wouldn't be because of his guilt for his drinking problem and the, the shit that he put us through. So I feel like that's kind of, that was that, that was kind of his thing. Like, it's like, okay, well I trust you and I'll let you do whatever you, you want to do because I would rather you be with your boyfriend than going out drinking at the bars. Like I am, you know, like, I feel like that's like his mentality now that I look back on it. So anyways, I had a lot of weird freedoms. Like I had, like when it came to my boyfriends, I had a lot of weird freedoms with that, but I still felt the need to live a double life. Like I, I would, I didn't want my parents to know I was drinking. I didn't want them to know I was like doing drugs and stuff. Well, drugs, like just marijuana, but you know, because I was point painting this picture of being like the straight A student, you know, like a good daughter because I didn't want to stress them out or stress my mom out. So it was like a weird thing. And I, you know, and then I was going through my own other shit too, that like stuff that I went through with another ex-boyfriend. So it was just like a lot. <laughs> um, and, and then like I grew up, I got, I got into my early twenties and I was with my husband. I met him in tw at 21 and my, my relationship with, with him, I almost said his name, my relationship with him, um, was more transparent with my parents and it turned my, my double life really kind of disappeared for a good few years. And then it wasn't until I started to dabble with wanting to go back to the Catholic church because I was born again, Christian at that time when I met my husband. Um, I started questioning my faith as part of wanting to go back to the Catholic church because he was, you know, so in a silly way, I was living a double life, like going back to the Catholic church and, and thinking about, you know, converting and trying to figure that part out because I knew my parents wouldn't like that idea of me not being a born again Christian anymore. Like that was a big thing for them and they were not happy about it. They were not happy, but they let me do what I wanted to do, you know, and then we got married and then, um, my other double life started when I discovered tarot in 2012. So I really, the biggest double life I've ever lived was the one I'm living right now. Um, was when I started reading tarot and I started changing my spirituality, like started to completely change, you know? Um, and that's where I'm at right now. So to me, the double lives that I chose to live in my lifetime so far have always been for the sake of not wanting to stress out or upset my family. And it's kind of still the same way with what I'm doing now um, because I would rather avoid 
that than um, than deal with you know them knowing and then they're like in my business about everything you know and and that's what I've been learning this in this in this experience because when I started my double life that was seven years ago how old am I 33 30 I was 26 um so since then you know when you're 26 you're going through like a quarter is it a quarter life yeah because then there's a midlife the quarter life crisis which is totally a thing and you're still, and you're like discovering yourself and you're like on the brink of turning 30 and usually you're going through some big life changes around that time. Like in your, in your late twenties is usually like when a lot of people are either getting married, they're getting pregnant, they're moving out, something big is happening. They're graduating college or they're, or they're going back to school. Like something big usually happens in your late twenties, which is also your Saturn return. And so for me, it was, I got engaged um, and then I changed, my spirituality changed. Like that was the two big things that happened in my Saturn return. And I just saw 11-11. Ha! That is hilarious. As I said that, I saw 11-11, which is the numbers that I saw when I started my spiritual journey. So synchronicity right there. Um, that's fucking crazy. Okay, so anyways... Um, so anyways, I just, I don't want to like tell you my whole story, even though I just fucking did, but I just wanted to say that the double life thing, sometimes it's necessary. Um, and sometimes we choose to do a double life because we don't want to hurt people or because we don't want to deal with those unnecessary conversations, you know? And that's the next point I wanted to make is that it is nobody's business what you do in your life, what you do with your life. You're an adult. When Once you turn 18, you are a full-blown adult. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Your parents, they, you know, they don't, they don't have control. They really don't have control over you at any point, but they do, like in a weird way, you know? Um... But literally, the ties, the strings, the cords, everything comes off once you turn 18. At least they should, you know? And you really start to, I feel like you really don't start to jump into knowing yourself until, like I said, you're late to early 30s. And then once you hit your 30s, you fucking know you who you are for the most part. Some, some, of, some of you people don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and you eventually you will you late bloomers but um and I thought I was a late bloomer but some people are very late bloomers um but your 30s you really become more aware of who you are and how you are and how you're gonna live your life um so if you're watching this and you're like 21 and you're still like freaking out over things it gets easier trust me it gets easier <laughs> Um, it's going to get a lot harder though. I'm going to tell you that like your late twenties is not easy. It's not easy. Qu quarter life crises is, are not easy to deal with. Um, there's, there's a lot that goes through your mind and your body and your life. <laughs> a Saturn return is a no joke. That's for sure. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to say like the, the dub, living a double life in some cases, some cases it is a negative, but it just depends. Everyone's situation is different. Um, but that's, that's me. And so, yeah, I live a double life and I choose to live a double life. Now, the other thing I wanted to say is that you can, you can disclose whatever and however much you want to about yourself to anyone. That is your free choice, right? But you do not have to disclose your entire life to anyone. It is nobody's damn business. Um, and I feel like I have to say that with a passion because it took me so long to finally be comfortable with that. And I'm still not comfortable with it after so many years and knowing, you know, just knowing like it's okay for me to be me. It's okay for me to be me. It's for, it's okay for me to be me. Do you know how hard, how long it took me to, to finally just be able to accept that? It took a long time. Um, and not just with spirituality, but it's also with my body, with my look, you know, with my, the way I am. 
<laughs> being a plus size woman, you know, it's, it, it was not easy. It's not easy to embrace that, but it's, it's something that is so important and it's so amazing when you finally can embrace it because it takes a load off of your, it's, <laughs> she's so crazy. It takes a load off of your shoulders. Okay. Um, but once you get to a certain age where you are comfortable with yourself and your lifestyle, you will realize that you don't have to disclose your life to everybody, okay? I was at a point at once where I thought, okay, my spirituality, my beliefs are changing. I need to tell everybody. No, you don't have to tell everybody. And I was so like glad that I didn't tell everybody because I would have probably have created the most uncomfortable situation for myself. Um, it is my choice to choose when, if I ever want to disclose anything about myself to anyone. It's my choice. Um, and sometimes I never will. Maybe I never will, you know? Maybe that double life will always be a part of my lifestyle. That's just how it is. There's no pressure there. I'm not pressuring myself, you know, to, to, to say anything. <clears throat> sometimes I wish I could come clean, but hey, life isn't perfect. <laughs> And my life would be a whole lot easier as it is, you know, if I were to disclose stuff, it, it would just make things a little bit more complicated. And I really don't want to do that for myself from the sake of me, my personal preference and my peace of mind. <laughs> um, so I guess like if you guys are watching and you if you do have experiences with double lives, I just want you to know that there is no pressure to have to disclose anything with anyone. Again, everyone's situation is different. And like I said, if you're living a double life because you are in an affair or you are like hiding a baby or you are just, you know, something like that, then in those cases, sometimes shit hits the fan and it'll come out. Sometimes shit might hit the fan and mine might come out. Like it just depends. But I'm a firm, a firm believer that if it's meant to come out, it will happen. You know, like I'm one of those types of people. If it's meant to be disclosed, it will come out eventually. Um, but you do not have to force yourself to be transparent with people simply because they are your relatives or they are your friends or they are, you know, important people in your life. You don't have to be transparent because then you got to think, are they transparent with me? Are they telling me everything? No. Chances are no, you know? So why do you have to be? So I just wanted to say that and end this before this gets too long um, and share that with you guys because I know there's a, a few of you who who are also living double lives and I just want you to know you're not alone. You're not alone. I am too. I choose to though for the sake of my, my sanity and my peace of mind. But you are not alone. You're not a bad person for doing so. It's it's just part of the way it is. But if it is taking a toll on you and if it is stressing you out and it's causing you anxiety, you really got to think about why is it, you know, like, is it so bad? Is it toxic? Are you doing something that you know is wrong? Like that's those are the questions you got to ask yourself because for me, my double life only feels bad. I only feel bad and ashamed of it when I'm spending a lot of time with the people who have opposite opinions of what I what I'm doing, okay? So, for example, like I'm into the tarot cards and I'm my spirituality is very different. I I have a different approach to my belief system than born again Christians do. But if I'm sitting around a bunch of Born, born again Christians having conversations, which is pretty much every family gathering that I ever have go that I ever go to. <laughs> um, yeah, I do start to feel guilty, or or I start to second guess my path, or I start to feel bad about my choices, or feel bad about my my double life. Yeah, because I'm around people who are the reason why I have to be that way. So it's like, of course, you're going to start feeling that way. But then the minute I'm in my own space and I'm in my house and I'm doing my thing and I'm living my life and I'm happy again, it's like, pff, I'm fine. <laughs> so you really got to ask yourself, like when you're feeling negative about it, 
why, like really identify why are you feeling negative out about it? And is the reason why you're doing it because you're trying to prevent something or like, you know what, you, you know, you know what I mean? So some double lives are necessary. Some of them are bad and I'm not here to judge, but if you're hiding, if you're in an affair, like I don't, I don't support that. <laughs> so to me, it's like, that would be a bad situation, but to each their own, right? So anyways, you guys, I just wanted to get on here and put a video out because it's been a while and I've been up super early today. I'm going to go make some coffee now and thank you guys for watching. And if you want to see other videos in my soul to soul playlist, check it out. And I will talk to you guys later. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs>